Liam, Finn and Alex are Britain's tiniest toddlers. They are only half the size of a typical three-year-old and will never grow much taller. This unique trio were all born with a condition so rare that worldwide there are less than 150 people diagnosed. They are all primordial dwarfs. There's absolutely no reason that she shouldn't do the same things other children her age. I'm big. I know. Her being small is not an issue. Every day is precious because this rare form of restricted growth comes with restricted life expectancy. These tiny toddlers are at risk of developing life-threatening brain conditions, which could strike at any time. It's a silent killer. There's no warning. And it's such a shock. There won't be a second you didn't miss it. This is a glimpse into their miniature world as they meet new friends, endure medical procedures, and make their way in the world. Can any obstacle stand in the way of Britain's tiniest toddlers? There's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Finn, Liam and Alex will always be among the smallest people in the world. But this doesn't stop them having huge personalities. Hello. Liam's just a star. I mean, he's a, he's a whirlwind on fire, totally. Love. Alex, one of the most loving children you'll ever meet. Mischief, he winds you up. Daddy. He's getting better every time I see him. Finn, she's a little princess. Oh, she's she's just amazing. She's she's just a, a normal three-year-old, but 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 small. She's outstanding, very determined, good minds of her all. These tiny toddlers have all been diagnosed with microcephalic osteodysplastic primordial dwarfism type 2, more commonly referred to as MOPD type 2. It's a subtype of dwarfism where the growth delay occurs whilst the babies are still in the womb. At birth, Alex and Finn weighed little more than two pounds. She was just small, um, but she was perfect in, in every way. Liam was the heaviest, but even at just over three pounds, his size shocked his parents. And I could rest his head here and his little legs would come down there. Mm. The tiniest little thing, his head was this big. But it was not just their size at birth that made these children so extraordinary. Born with the rarest form of dwarfism, they were one in five million and part of an exclusive group. There are about 100 children and adolescents known in the States and there are about 12 in the UK. Unlike other forms of dwarfism, these children's bodies will always be proportional, but tiny, never growing taller than three foot. And even though Alex from Liverpool is the tallest of the trio at 30 inches, his short stature is evident when he's with children his own age. Uh, this is Patrick, Alex, one of Alex's friends. Uh, he's about four weeks, a month older than what Alex is. Hey! Are you two bouncing? Aged three, Alex is only as tall as his 12-month-old playmate, Hal. This cap is made for a three-month-old baby, and whilst it won't fit one-year-old Hal, it's too small for you, isn't it? it drowns Alex. Finn lives in Wrexham and is the smallest of the group. At just 25 inches tall, she's smaller than the average five-month-old baby. Clothes at the minute, she's in naught to six months. So her tights are naught to six months. They are too big. They are too big. Whoops. The biggest problem, to be honest, is the shoes. They don't make smaller than a size two, I yeah. think, and she's only just a size one. 
I pull my laces. Okay, good girl. Liam lives in Nottingham, and at almost four, he weighs the equivalent of a three-month-old baby. Measuring just 29 inches tall, his small stature means that his mum, Jo, can never buy him the same clothes as his friends. When Liam wanted a Power Rangers costume, Jo had to get the suit specially made at twice the cost. Let's see them muscles. <gasps> you look fantastic. Liam's best friend, Finton, is three months younger than him. But although Finton towers above Liam, this doesn't stop him doing anything his friend does. He has no fear. He has no fear whatsoever. The and the, fear. The, the drive he has and the ambition to do something, that is going to give him such a great chance at life. But life for these children is full of uncertainty and is not something their parents take for granted. Because this form of dwarfism comes with the threat of potentially fatal brain conditions. One of the main causes of concern for parents is brain aneurysms and a condition in itself called Moya Moya. Moya Moya is a disease where blood vessels in the brain narrow. This leads to a network of fine vessels growing to supply the brain with blood. Eventually, the artery can become blocked, which may lead to a stroke. An aneurysm is a ballooning of a blood vessel in the brain, which can cause the artery to weaken and burst, causing a bleed into the brain. Both conditions can be fatal. There's families that we know that have had children who have sadly just dropped dead. The only way to detect aneurysms or moya moya is to do an MRI scan, which shows any abnormalities in the brain. The risk of the children developing these brain conditions is so great, they are routinely scanned. It could slowly develop over three, four, six months. You become shocked at how fast the effect of an aneurysm can kick in. In three months from now, Alex is having his yearly scan, but lately, Finn has been giving her parents cause for concern. For two weeks now, she's been having headaches in the morning. She's been waking up with bad headaches. Finn's never, ever complained of headaches before. And one of the first signs we were told to look out for for aneurysms and moya moya is if the child says they've got a headache. So instantly, we're alarm, alarm bells, bells ring. Going. Finn's MRI isn't due for another six months. But her parents, Mel and John, are desperate for her to have a scan as soon as possible. We would rather know what's going on because if there is something starting, then you know that it's starting, so you know what to do rather than just have your child die with no warning because that's what an aneurysm would do. As they wait for an appointment for an MRI scan, John and Mel face the unknown. For all these children, the future is uncertain. But will Liam's family find hope when they meet one of the few primordial dwarfs to make it to adulthood? Britain's tiniest toddlers all have MOPD type 2, a rare form of dwarfism, which means that their bodies will always be proportional but small. This extremely rare genetic condition comes with the threat that they could develop deadly brain conditions. Finn's parents have noticed some worrying signs. You can't live and think of the worst because it's going to affect Finn. It's always on our mind. Um, but to wrap Finn up in cotton wool would not do any favours for her. Mel and John want Finn to live her life to the full, especially where her education is concerned. Like Liam and Alex, Finn goes to nursery with children her own age. Her short stature doesn't stop her from doing anything her classmates do. They make allowances that involve all the other children as well. So they've made sure that they do artwork on the floor because sometimes you can't reach the easels. They built a step so that she can go up, she can wash her own hands. Although Finn knows her size means she sometimes needs help, this doesn't stop her being fiercely independent. If you try and help her when she doesn't want your help, she gets very, very angry. But she's good. It's, you know, it's great that she's so feisty. But this wasn't always the case. 
Finn's come a long way since she started nursery, aged just one and a half. When she first started here, she was very quiet. She was always with the lady. She didn't want to play at all. Um, she was always, um, well, by herself, really. So she started then getting a few more friends and being more independent. And before we know it, bingo, she's absolutely fine. Primordial dwarf children can be delayed developmentally. She's hitting all the targets that someone her age should. Um, and walking sometimes, yeah, yeah um, which is great. And more, it just... It kind of brings home the fact that her being little doesn't matter at all. Finn is only 25 inches tall, and as the other children in nursery get taller, Finn is becoming more self-conscious about her size. She'll come home and she'll say, my hands are a lot smaller than this person's hands and my shoes won't fit this person because my shoes are small. Um, she's definitely aware. But I don't, I wouldn't say she's unhappy. Mm. And she's made some really good friends. And, and she's, she feels safe. <laughs> That's all you want, really. I think, no, she's always been happy. I just think, I think now, like the last 12 months, she's been more aware of her size. Mm. Um, she'd go, when I'm, when I'm this big. When children are younger, they always said, okay, well, when I'm, when I'm bigger. And we don't say when you're bigger now, we say when you're older, rather than just trying to avoid the subject altogether. In a couple of months from now, Finn will be leaving the safety and security of her nursery school to start big school. When Liam's family discover that 20-year-old American primordial dwarf Danny is on holiday in London, they are desperate to meet him, as they've never met an adult with the same condition as their son. It's showing us the future, showing us that there is a future, because at the beginning you, you just, you don't think that there is a future really, and you're just like, every day is one day at a time, and it's like another day we've got our boy. And um, seeing Danny, it's like, our boy's gonna be an adult, and that's just fantastic. And I'm gonna cry. I'm off again. Your mummy's off again. Well, oh, thank you. Come on, you'll be okay. <sighs> Here's Danny now. Look, <gasps> here he is. I can see Danny. Oh God, I'm gonna cry. He's crying. Hello. Hello. Pleasure to meet you, Robbie Smith. Nice to meet you. Enjoy your trip. Absolutely. Hey, yeah. Danny. Football. That is it's a football. It's football. Danny, do you think you might be available for babysitting? <laughs> Maybe. <I'll pay> you. <laughs> a trip on the London Eye will allow the family's time to see the sights whilst getting to know each other. If you look, we're moving. Boy, and we're off. Although Danny has gone through puberty, he has a high-pitched voice, a characteristic shared by primordial dwarfs. Age 20, Danny wears clothes and shoes that are designed for a four-year-old. He weighs just over three and a half stone and is just 40 inches tall. I've never let my size become a big problem. And not all my friends, but I've had really good friends that have accepted me for who I am, being small. The parents also want to know this. He reached his full height right around 12 years old, 13 years old. He hasn't grown much since then. That's Danny when he was a little boy. He looks a bit like you, doesn't he? Yeah. This is great. This is his graduating from high oh, school. Yeah. Hi, there. Uh, that's not you, Danny. That doesn't even look like oh, you. Oh, yeah. Did you have a big do for graduation? I had a big dance. Did you? He wants to date. It's difficult, of course, because, uh, you know, a lot of the girls that he is with see him as friend, as a friend. Yeah. My girlfriend. <laughs> is that you? Yeah, that's so, me. That, that your Tell Danny how many girlfriends you've got. How many girlfriends? Three. Yeah. Wow. To be honest, I was worried about meeting Danny because I thought that I had it into perspective how big Aileen was going to get. And I, I was a bit apprehensive of meeting Danny because 
I don't know because I've met, I've met children who have the condition, but I've never met a grown man. And to look at Danny and how super he is and what, and what he's after achieving. Yeah, it's been a tough, tough road though. I mean, you see Danny and he looks really happy and everything's great, but you know, there's always going to be a million little things along the way where, you know, the first time his friends get a date and they're all going out on a date and he doesn't have a date. You know, something I'm worried so, about. Yeah. Did hear if you go through puberty, the chances of them growing after that is, is next to none. Yeah, and we did, we did growth hormone, we did, you know, all sorts of different things to try to help him grow, but, you know, just none of it was really working. I think the particulars of this syndrome are such that there's really nothing at this point that they can do. Ice cream break. Another side effect of primordial dwarfism is that many children have difficulty feeding. Liam has never had any problems. But since they were babies, both Finn and Alex were fed through ports into their stomachs. Now Finn is older, she eats. But Alex still doesn't. It is stressful that Alex doesn't eat or drink and stuff like that. Even though we know he's allowed solids, because he's never had it, when he does have a little go sometimes, he does choke. He's had a crisp before and he's choked on a tiny little piece of crisp. Today, he's having a barium swallow diagnostic X-ray to investigate if there is a physical reason he's not eating. It it is, yeah. That's right. Alex will be fed solids and fluids containing barium, which will be visible on an X-ray so that the radiologists can see exactly what happens when he eats or drinks. <laughs> Alex has developed an aversion to having anything put in his mouth, so being force-fed is extremely distressing for him. get it in. Okay, just have a little taste. Good boy. Yeah. In the past, a lot of procedures he's had done has been more life-threatening than anything. Uh, this is just a procedure of him getting upset more than anything, but the outcome could be brilliant. As much as he puts things to his mouth, we need him to start trying to eat it as such. Look at this one. Here, is he? Good boy, well done. Ah, cool, that's gone down. That go down okay? Went down the right path, so. And we've never ever gotten to do that, you know what I mean? God, he's taught absolutely loads there. Alex is getting more and more distressed. But although the radiologist knows the solids went down well, he still needs to check whether Alex can swallow fluids. OK, yeah, fire away. There you go, that's it, that's good. That was a really good swallow, that worked. Yeah. Okay. Does that obviously prove that he does have a swallowing reflex? Yeah, cool. I'm so impressed, and for the first time in three and a half years, I've just seen my son swallow, albeit from a third perspective. <laughs> Good boy. Alex, what's well up? Did you have a drink? And one of Daddy's lucky roast dinners. You're going to reach your potential. Enjoy life, aren't you? The tests have proved there's no physiological reason why Alex shouldn't be eating or drinking. It's been a good day for the Connaties. In London, Liam and Danny are playing when strangers ask to take a photograph of Danny. Whilst Danny and his dad are happy for the photo to be taken, Mum Monica even finds this positive attention difficult. When people ask to take a picture of Dan, uh, it, it just is overwhelming for me. Uh, it makes me very uncomfortable. I'll go home at night and cry. Danny kind of stands out more because he's older, and I seen Danny was getting a lot more looks, and people want to photograph with Danny. But that, that, that's what that's what's going to happen to us in the future. It, yeah. it, Liam just looks like probably a uh, premature baby. Yes. People are going to point sometimes, people are going to say silly or cruel things sometimes. You've got to learn to be thick-skinned about those things. The other option, which is sort of staying at home all the time and not going out in public, is not a really pretty option either. Okay, lovely to see you all. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you very Enjoy much. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. Over in Liverpool, Alex's parents also want to meet other people with the same condition as their son, but they want to do it on a bigger scale, 
by organising the UK's first primordial dwarf convention in their hometown. Right, so we've got 10 weeks for the convention. We need to um, establish what's outstanding. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six forms back. Our aims for this, for our convention, is bringing everyone together, getting the families together, for the kids to realise that they're not alone, there's someone out there. They're so excited to, to actually meet somebody else who's in the same sort of like boat as they are and as such, really. We want to make it special for the families. We don't want to disappoint them. It's just, the, the whole thing is just an absolute massive stress. Right. Both have got Sue and John feel under immense pressure as they need to raise money to make this convention happen. Robbie and Joe also want to help, so the two families get together to try to raise money at a local fun day. You a couple of little pennies for our little guys? Doing um, fundraising events can be surprisingly stressful. It can be very hard work. But if we don't do it, if, if, if we don't do it, our children will be growing up on their own. It's not just about bringing money in, it's about getting the awareness yeah. out there. Since Alex was diagnosed, we had quite a few negative things said to us uh, about Alex, about his size. It got to the stage where one day I'd been to a, a mother and toddler group and two children were just, to me, really quite nasty, trying to hit Alex in the face, laughing at him. When John come home from work, I say I was just crying and I just cried all night. I said to John, we need to turn this round, we need to start. Mm letting people understand the condition. I'm fed up of people staying, I'm fed up of people talking under the breaths, look at that little boy and this, that and the other. So from there, that's where we started doing awareness programmes. We bring Alex along so that people can visually see what these children are all about. Finn's parents are still anxiously waiting for a brain scan, but in the meantime, they have to prepare themselves for another milestone in her life. Finn's first day at big school. Britain's tiniest toddlers were all born with the rarest form of dwarfism, MOPD type 2. Even though they are living in a world that is too big for them, they don't let anything stand in their way. Three-year-old Finn is due to start school but she's so small that she can only wear clothes that fit a six-month-old baby. But Finn's parents are adamant that she will have a uniform just like her classmates. No parent would ever think of sending an average height child to school in jeans when there was a school uniform, so... Why should we? Why, exactly. Why should she have to be any different? We thought we'll put the feelers out, see if anybody can help and maybe make a jumper and a cardi because there's nowhere we could buy that and we'd have to mm. make it ourselves. Find a dressmaker to, to, to yeah. make that. A local school uniform supplier has agreed to specially make Finn her uniform. And to do that within, what, three weeks and to come back with a whole uniform to last a year, just brilliant. Today, Finn gets to try on her bespoke uniform. We've got everything ready for you here. Great. Have a look. We've got a special polo shirt. Ah. And a lovely little dress. Finn? Do you want to go try these on? Do you want to try a tracksuit? What do you think? Thumbs up or not? Troy, that'll star in it. She like all the others when she's at school. She'll be great when she's at school. Great. Having the same uniform and everything. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> oh, very, very, thank you. In less than a month, Finn will be starting school. But for Alex's parents, a big day is also looming. In a couple of weeks, John and Sue hope to stage the UK's first primordial dwarf convention. There's a lot of hard work being put in and there's still, gosh, there's still an awful lot of hard work to be put in to actually pull this convention off. John has a full-time job. I'm a full-time carer for Alex. 
It's all as bad ready for Clarence. It is nightmare. It is hard. Work, charity, Alex. Trying to balance them can become a nightmare logistically. Um, Alex does take a lot of her time up. Hi there. If the convention is going to happen, it will need Sue and John's full attention this weekend to finalise plans. But caring for Alex is a 24-hour job, so for the next two days, he will be staying at Clare House, which provides round-the-clock care for children. This is your room. Alex's room. You've stayed in this room plenty of times. How are you? Say hello. Say hello. You You've got all the shade. Oh. It's okay. Are you okay? Sure. Do you want to come to me, Alex, for a cuddle? Although he is a regular visitor here, it doesn't make parting any easier. Are you going to say bye bye to mummy? Say bye bye and see you later. See Give me five. Speak yeah. to them later kiss, on the kiss. phone. Mm, love you. You take care. Okay. You be good. Yeah. See you later. So bye bye. Oh. Mm. Mm. You'll be okay. Yeah. I just hate leaving him. Uh, I know he's in a great place and I know he absolutely loves it when he's there, but it's just the fact that we're leaving him and I sometimes mm. feel like he thinks he don't want him. It benefits him, benefits us. Yeah, one thing about it is Alex doesn't have a good sleeping pattern at all. He can be up most of the night. At least now Ready? we might be busy Ready? right through the day and absolutely shattered, but at least when we go to bed of the night, hopefully, mm. We'll sleep. Knowing me, I'll probably wake up and start thinking about him on the phone to see how he's doing. Come on, then, let's go sleep. We, we do have a bit of time to ourselves, but on this occasion, more so than anything, it will be charity work. Um, we've got the convention in two weeks, three two weeks', weeks time. time. So we've still got loads to finalise on that. So it is going to be busy, busy, busy. In Wrexham, Finn is still waiting for an MRI scan to investigate if the headaches she's been suffering with lately are being caused by a brain aneurysm, a condition associated with MOPD type 2. But there's another side effect. There can be abnormalities in the location and size of the kidneys. Today, Finn's having an ultrasound which parents John and Mel are hoping will reveal her renal organs are normal. Yes, it's this bed here. So we're going to have a look with this jelly and have a look and see what we can see inside. The same that as with, jelly? That's the jelly. Do you want to feel it? Yeah? <laughs> so first of all, what we need to do is see has if they're in the area where I'd expect them to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. It has, has got cream on it. OK. Now, there we go. So uh, this is her right kidney. This is her liver here. OK. And this is her right kidney. And this looks structurally perfectly normal to me measure the length of the kidney. So that's 5.3 centimetres. Now obviously that's smaller than I'd expect for her age. So yeah. they are smaller, Yeah. but she's small. Yeah. There's no cysts and they're in the right location, so that's quite reassuring. Oh, yeah. Is Any questions? Or? No, no, that's great. Right. Lovely. It's been a good day for Finn and her parents. Back in Liverpool, Alex is at nursery. Although he has learning difficulties, his parents feel that interacting with children his own age will help his development. Alex is a very happy little boy. He comes in straight away every morning, always got a big smile on his face. One, two, three. There are certain things that we have to adapt for Alex when he comes out in the garden, like always making sure a member of staff is with him in case he's knocked over by another child. But it's at lunchtime the nursery has to make the most allowances. Because he hasn't been able to eat food um, or drink fluids, he's always been fed through um, a tube into his tummy, which is milk. At the moment, we're trying to get him to eat through his mouth while we're still feeding him at the same time with his tube. When the children first saw him getting fed through his tube, I they were a bit sort of, why does Alex get fed through his tube? And then we just explained, but they're used to it now. Mmm, should you put your tube in? Yeah. 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 Ye
chewy tube on first. I'd love them to be able to sit up and drink something. I'd love them to be able to eat. There should be no reason why he's not eating, drinking and enjoying what normal three-year-old children get up to with food and drink. You gonna lick your fingers? He plays with it more so than actually eats it at the moment because he just likes to feel it in his fingers. It's more exploratory at the moment. Um, he is making progress every day, though. Are you going to eat the rest of your vegetables up? It's a momentous day for Finn and her parents as today she starts school. I don't know where you are. We've got to put a uniform on in a minute. Why? Because you've got to wear your school uniform. Why? Because that's the rules. Go away. I'm not sure if he's nervous or excited, to be honest. And I'm, I'm excited that she's going because she's, she's ready to go. I think she's going to be happy in school. Dress. For any parent, their child's first day at school can be daunting. But as Finn is only as tall as a nine-month-old baby, Dad John also has the worry that Finn might be the centre of unwanted attention. I was feeling a bit sickly last night, um, wondering, you know, how the other kids are going to be with her today. Um, they're going to be curious, and rightly so. Um, so you just imagine there might be one or two questions, and it's really how Finn is going to react to that, so she should be okay. She's got to let go and say, there you go. Finn may be smaller than the other children, but her parents wanted to face her first day of school on her own, just like her classmates. She didn't want to go in at first. She was a bit hesitant, um, and she didn't look as comfortable as she did in nursery, but then she's not going to because it's all new. You're like, oh, oh, she's in there all by herself. It just feels different she's to She's not nursery, a baby anymore. All. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Six hours later, and after a great first day at school, Finn rushes home to play with her best friend, Ellie. I'm glad she's happy. I'm glad she's coming and she's happy to play and she's getting changed and everything's normal. Finn? Yeah? You're a brave girl going to school. I think it's great. People were surrounding her at one point, but at least they cleared that up. Mm. Um, explained to all the children not to pick her up, which is good. The biggest relief is that no one seems to have asked any horrible questions or asked any questions she couldn't answer or made her feel uncomfortable or different. The day of the Walking with Giants convention has finally dawned and 14 families from all over the UK and America have congregated in Liverpool. because it's a safe environment, because everybody knows and understands everybody else. It's just really comfortable and it's, it's just nice. You can just go in and everybody's on the same wavelength about things they need to know and what they want to find out and, and the kids can just go off and play. You cannot put into words how important it is for these children to socialise with each other and for us to socialise with, with the parents. You just want to talk to someone who understands what you're going through. Mm. Someone who's been there, who's bearing all the grief, all the concerns. Hopefully it's just to offload your problems with each other. Hopefully gain answers. For some families at the convention, the answer they are looking for is a diagnosis. There's families with children that's not got a diagnosis or who's been told that they're not MOPD, but they may have another form of unknown, proportionate short stature. I want to try and reach out to them. Um, because person's not MOPD too, 
Should we shut the doors on them? Should we pull the shutters down? Definitely not. One of the undiagnosed children is 14-month-old Charlotte, who weighs less than six pounds and measures only 20 inches. Primordial dwarf Kennedy is five and known around the world as the real Thumbelina. She was believed to be the smallest primordial dwarf in the world, but she was twice the weight of Charlotte at birth. Charlotte's mum, Emma, shares her experiences with other mums. This is your first time of, of meeting a group of people together. It is, yeah. How have you, uh, how have you felt? What's, what's your feelings up to now? <laughs> it's nice to feel included, to feel yeah. that you are not on your own. You're not alone, yeah. and that's what we want to try and get over to it's everyone. It's a nice feeling to not feel alone, though. Yeah. When, so. you, when, you, when you are in an unknown situation, you do not know what they have. It's very hard to try and get on with life mm. as a normal person because you're always held back by the what-ifs, yeah. buts, things like that. Emma is desperate for a diagnosis, as she knows that if Charlotte does have MOPD type 2, she may already have developed brain aneurysms. These can only be detected through an MRI scan, but to get a scan, she needs a diagnosis. Another mum, Alison, knows exactly how Emma feels, as her son, Wraith, has been told that he won't be eligible for any more brain scans, as he is undiagnosed and therefore not considered at risk. There's no answers, all these questions. Yeah. And especially the other thing is as well, about the aneurysms, you know, the scans you have to have. Uh, you know, Wraith doesn't have to have any more, and that's going to be a fight. They are not the only parents with worries. Finn has recently shown signs that she could have developed a life-threatening brain condition, and she's still waiting for a scan which could save her life. For Britain's tiniest toddlers, one of the biggest obstacles they have to face is the risk that they may have developed an aneurysm, a bulging of blood vessels in the brain. If the aneurysm was to burst, it could lead to a stroke. It could lead to being completely paralysed. It could lead to the worst death. It's a silent killer. There's no warning. Bang. It's a crucial week for Alex and Finn, as they are both going to have an MRI scan which can detect tiny changes within the brain and is one of the safest ways to discover the presence of abnormalities. Alex is first. I think you go into it just hoping that it's going to come back clear. Uh, again, I think it's at the back of our minds that there could be something there, but we haven't really no. gone into conversation over it, have we? No, if you don't want to think about it, you want to stay positive, but when you've got to think about a situation like that, mm. it's unbearable. For Sue and John, it will be a few weeks before they get Alex's results. A couple of days later, it's Finn's turn to have a scan. Over the last three months, her parents, Mel and John, have been extremely worried because Finn has had symptoms that could be a sign that she has developed a brain condition. Obviously a bit apprehensive about the scan for the results because um, of the headaches. She's still getting them on and off, um, and it's been maybe three, four months now. So last time, when we had it last year, that she'd never had headaches, she was fine, it was just a routine, but this time it's a bit more of a worry. I tell you what, we've got to see a lady, and then you can come with me and we'll find you three chocolate biscuits. OK? And a breakaway. And a breakaway. And a Kit Kat. And a Kit Kat. There have been four, four children now, around Finn's age, that have had either an aneurysm, aneurysms or moya moya, and um, in some cases uh, needed corrective surgery. Now, if it's aneurysms, then there are certain places in the brain which are inoperable. That's the thing you've just got to kind of deal with when it happens. After 45 minutes, Finn's brain scan is completed, and as the anaesthetic wears off, 
she is reunited with her parents. Ben. Hello. Wake up. She's been fine, no problems. Oh, hello. Let's see you up a little bit. Let's wake up and get some juice. Here we go. It's going to come out in a bit. They'll take that out. It's okay. Take that out in a minute, darling. If it's good news, brilliant. But obviously, I'm a bit worried about being bad news this time. It will be a fortnight until they get the results. But in Nottingham, the Smith family have also been eagerly awaiting an important day to arrive, Liam's birthday. Wow! There we go. <gasps> it's got a badge on it. What's the number? Do you know what that number is? What's this big number? <coughs> that many. Oh. Good boy. Is that how old you are today? Liam's dressed up, ready for his party. Every child's birthday is a special day. But as a primordial dwarf, each year is a major milestone, as many MOPD type 2 children don't make it to adulthood. Do, do you remember the state I got myself into about his first day at nursery? Yeah. And I, I was terrified to take him to nursery because I, I, I just had it in my head, you know, what if he, what if he left us? And I went there to hold his hand. Because we just didn't know how long he was here for, did we? No, we still don't. And now he's four, and I'm starting to think about when he's a teenager and how we're going to cope with this and what kind of a teenager is he going to be like? Because he's so determined now. Parents Robbie and Joe, they have learnt to be positive about Liam's future. When Liam was first diagnosed, um, I thought that's it, he'll never leave home. Um, now, why not? Why not? He could have, have a house that's adapted for him. Liam will have a job. Liam will drive a car. Liam will fulfil his education. Yeah. Obviously, I think he will have health issues along the way, but we'll have to deal with them when they come. It's unbearable, it's not even something I want to think about. Not even something I want to think about. There won't be a second you didn't miss him. No, not likely. There's no point in getting upset, he's fine now, and that's the main thing. We live for today, he's fine today. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Good form. It's only a year now till your next one. But they are not the only family with something to celebrate. Alex has received the results of his brain scan and he has not developed any life-threatening brain conditions. He's overcome so much in his life in a short space of time. I've now lost him a couple of times and he's always bounced back. It's as if he said, nothing's going to defeat me. There's also good news for Finn too, as no abnormality showed up with her brain scan. Brilliant, because hopefully, throughout the whole of her life, she's just going to be the same as everybody else her age, so it's one less thing for her to worry about. For Britain's tiniest toddlers, the future will no doubt involve each other. The kids are going to grow up friends, then they can talk to each other when they get older, say how they're feeling and stuff like that. It's just grace. They may be destined to be some of the smallest people in the world, but that won't stop them doing whatever they want. And that includes deciding when filming is over. The shoe 